There are many in the world today who are following what is known as Elenin or Nibiru or Planet X. Some of these who are following this inbound object are even considering that it might in fact be what the Bible refers to as the star Wormwood. I've spoken in the past that it certainly fits into the timeline of things because the first six trumpets of the apocalypse have already begun to sound. With this being the case, since Wormwood is part of the third trumpet, it is in fact on its way whether it is Elenin or not. With all of the focus that is on Elenin and some focus on the other two objects that are in her wake as well, most people are missing the big picture. They are missing the big picture because they are not focused on why our Creator is sending His wrath. They are focused on the effect and not on the cause. In their self-righteousness, they are not considering that just maybe His wrath is being sent to them as well. I have also said in the past that I do not know if Elenin is the star Wormwood or not, but that it would make perfect sense that my father would allow man to be able to see that it is coming. I say this because man has also known that their Creator's wrath, wrath would one day be sent to the world, but few have hearkened to his warnings in spite of them. So now it would be just and fit that he would allow man the ability to see his vengeance coming through his heavens because he has warned them in advance and they did not hearken. This is the further witness against man that they could see his wrath coming directly with their eyes even and still not hearken to him. For this reason it will overtake them as a thief in the night even though they can see it coming. Another thing that even the people who are thinking that this might be Wormwood do not seem to be considering is that Wormwood is just one of seven trumpets and it is not even mentioned as one of the three woes. This means that it is not even but a small part in comparison to the rest of his wrath that will soon be here. I have proclaimed that I am a prophet of the Elohim of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that he has raised me up out of the captivity to be his witness with his son against mankind but few are hearkening just as few have hearkened to any of his servants including his son i have been speaking what each of you must do in order to be delivered through the coming affliction but almost no one is listening the trumpets are sounding but few are joining in with his servant to increase their sound he wants all of us sounding the warning and responding to the, the warning cry. What is it going to take to get you to join in? Will it take Elenin in plain view? No, this will not be enough for most of you. Major earthquakes and volcanoes happening globally will not be enough. Tsunamis and global plagues and pestilences will not be enough for most of you either. Most of you will be just like Pharaoh and these events will only harden your hearts. But hardened hearts or not, these events are at your door so not believing is not going to keep them from happening. I have told you that he is commanding you to cover your heads at this time and to turn from your ways to and to turn to his path. This was prophesied to happen that one would come forward and make this declaration and it was to be a sign for you. In Ezekiel 24 he gave a prophecy to Ezekiel that in the last days one would step forward and proclaim to those who would who would turn return to him to cover their heads and to get ready verse 24 just as with Ezekiel this is a sign to you according to all that he has done you shall do and when this sign comes you will know that I am Adonai also you son of man shall it not be that you lament in the day when I take from them their fortified places and the joy of the joy of their glory, the desire of their eyes, and take away that which they fix their minds on, and take away their sons and their daughters. He that escapes in that day shall come to you to announce this to your ears. And he's referring to covering covering your heads and other things as well that I've talked about in other videos. I suggest you go back and listen to them as well about why we're to cover our heads and such. He has delivered me out of the captivity and made me this person. His wrath is coming. He has also proclaimed a seventh year Sabbath to exemplify that the mark of the beast is rebellion because sadly most of you refuse to hearken to this Sabbath as well. 
He is putting the test in front of you. If you fear him enough to hearken to his servant. He has given us so much proof in the scriptures that I am his servant, but his scriptures are not enough for most of you. Your refusal to hearken to him is testifying to your guilt. And I have said repeatedly in these verses that this is not about me because it's not. You did not hearken to his son either, nor to the rest of his prophets. His son walked out of the tomb and you still would not listen to what he said about living by his father's every word and obeying him. In doing so, you have trampled his blood underfoot and, and now your blasphemies will be recompensed. But you can turn from them before it is too late. He is crying out to you to repent and to enter into a covenant with him to be molded and fashioned in his image. I have spoken previously how he is going to send the true good news about his offer to the world on, on, the, on the wings of the calamities that are coming. I have spoken that sadly it is going to take major destruction just to even get a small flock to hearken to him. He said that it will go out not by might nor by the power of men but by his spirit. I have wondered how this will happen because I doubt that people will be watching these videos because I doubt that few if any will even have power less more internet capability. He has started to show me how it will happen. I have previously thought that the 144,000 will be resurrected immediately as Yeshua returns. This is because I still had some preconceived ideas that came from growing up in Saul of Tarsus's blasphemous lies. Also, I did what many have done and read my preconceived beliefs, beliefs into Yeshua's, Yeshua's parable when in John 5 when he spoke. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all, the, all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and will come forth, and they that have done well unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Yeshua is not talking about the resurrection of the saints here. He is talking about the great white throne of judgment. I let this throw me off as well. Those who are already dead of the 144,000 will be resurrected in the coming months, and they will teach what I am speaking to you. They will proclaim the truth that has been desolated by men under Satan's domain. These of the 144,000 will not include those who are still alive in the flesh of this number at this time who will be caught up to meet Yeshua when he returns. Those who will still be alive of this number will be a very small flock at that time, only 153 people. I'm not exactly sure yet when this resurrection of the saints who are already asleep will be. A foreshadow of this event happened with, with uh, the earthquake when Yeshua died. In Matthew 27 we read this, And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and were resurrected, and came out of the graves, and they went into the holy city, and appeared to many. The King James words this, that this event happened after Yeshua was resurrected, but the word after is mistranslated, and the word used for resurrection is a different word altogether. So it means resurrected or, or um, you know, brought back to life. Actually, when it refers to the res resurrection, it uses a different, a different Greek word. These were the 24 elders that he's speaking of in these verses who, who ascended to the throne behind Yeshua when he ascended. This event could happen on November, referring to the resurrection of the saints that's ahead of us, could happen on November 9th because this will be exactly 150 days before the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread next year, which is the night of the memorial of the first exodus. Or it could happen on this night as, as well, which will be the seventh day of April of next year. The night of the seventh day of April is the night of the 15th day of the first month, which is a night that we are commanded to remember in the sense of reflecting upon it always. This resurrection will follow a great earthquake either way. If it happens on November 9th, then it would mean that the five months of torment associated with the fifth trumpet could be unleashed at this time as well. The reason that I'm speaking of this today is because the demons will also be busy during this time, so I'm speaking to you to tell you how to tell them apart. The good guys will appear in white robes, and they will be telling you that you must live by every word of Yahweh Elohim. Satan and his cronies have been busy staging an alien intrusion, so 
I have no doubt that these spirit beings will be perceived by many to be aliens, and so will others be and I, that, I, that I'm leading up to telling you about, be, be, be perceived as aliens, that is, I'm referring to, if I will get to that. During the five-month time of torment, the demons will be busy as well, as I said, but the question is, will they be the ones doing the tormenting? In the five months, if the five months begins on November 9th, then you can know that the second exodus will occur the night of the 15th day of the first month, which as I said will be on April 7th. I just do not know at this time if these saints will be resurrected at the beginning of the five months or at the end of, of, it, of it or at some other time during these last days. But I do know that they will be resurrected to appear to many before Yeshua returns to spread the good news to the whole world. They're going to be a big part of the good news going out. All in my Father's perfect timing. I'm telling each of you that you must turn from eating the leavened bread of this world. He was asked of me if these demons will be the ones tormenting the evil people of the world during the five months of torment. This person also asked what I thought the locust of the fifth trumpet are. Concerning the five months, we read in Revelations 9, starting verse, verse 2, And the angel opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a, a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither anything, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of Elohim in their foreheads. Some want to make the claim that these are demons being released. The demons are already here. They were already cast down here. Are these, reverse, are these verses referring to them being given more power or something like that? It certainly is clear that they are not referring to the power of men because it says that in the following verse that those who are subjected to them will not be able to die and warfare from men would, would cause death. I have always been confounded by these verses because my thinking was being led by preconceived ideas or it was just not given to me yet until recently to, to understand. If Satan and the demons are already here, and if it cannot be referring to an army of men, then who is this prophecy referring to? John gives us a detailed description of these, the, the description of the locust who are released from the pit. And then he, then he goes on in verse 11 to say, And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name is, is in the Hebrew tongue Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue, it, his name is Apollyon. Abaddon means destruction. Is Satan going to be sent to destroy his own kind? Those already following his lies? It does not fit. And Satan is a fallen angel. He is no longer an angel. But what does, what does fit is the angel of destruction that Yahweh Elohim sent to destroy 70,000 one day to punish David. You read that account in 2 Samuel. In chapter 24, verse 15, So Yahweh sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning to the time appointed, and there died of the people from Dan to Beersheba 70,000 men. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, Yahweh took pity over the calamity and said to the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough. Stay, stay now your hand. And the angel of Yahweh was by the threshing place of Arunah and the Jebusite. So you see, Hikwe did not send Satan that day to destroy. He sent his angel. He has a destroying angel in his host that is reserved to do his bidding. The night of the Passover night, he sent his destroying angel as well. It is not Satan and his cronies that are going to be tormenting mankind. It will be a legion or a legion or legions of, of angels. Of course, it will not take many of them because they are some pretty capable beings. People want to confuse these angels with the beast who will ascend from the depths or the abyss to kill the witness and they are not the same. In the 
verse in Revelations 11 that describes the beast, it does not give the same description. It says the beast descended from the depths. It does not say the angel as it does in Revelations 9. It uses the same terminology for out of the depths, but it is not talking about the same being as the destroying angel and those that he is leading. Also in Revelations 9 uses the description of a pit. That's why I highlighted it back there, which is symbolic for a well or cistern. And this word is not used in Revelations 11 or chapter 20 when it refers to the depths. Although the translator certainly added it to those verses as well, it's not found in the original text. In Revelations 11 and also in Revelations chapter 20 where it talks about the depths where Satan and the demons will be bound for a thousand years, the word for pit, meaning a well or a cistern, is missing altogether. In either case, they are referring to two different things. A beast and an angel are not the same thing. Just ask yourself how Satan and his demons can be let loose if they are already here and ask yourself why they would torment those who are already on their team anyway. I say it this way because we are either on our Creator's team, bearing His name, or we are on Satan's team, bearing His name. His name represents the apostate one. The description of His name is disobedience. Our preconceived ideas that came from the teachings of men who did not have a clue can get in the way of the obvious. Also, the false beliefs that many have about a place they call hell can cloud our vision as well. And maybe, as with other things, this understanding was just hidden until now. The important thing to catch here is they will not hurt a certain group of people. They'll not be able to. This group is those who have the mark or the seal of Yahweh Elohim in their foreheads. I suggest that you get this mark quickly because November 9th is just around the corner. And if it is, if it if it's not November 9th, the latest that it could be is February 19th of 2012 because it has it has to begin at least 150 days prior to July 18th. In either case, it's not far off. Satan and his demons have been busy setting up a delusion that these marvelous beings will be aliens and, and they are not. Satan's crew will also be busy trying to keep you under the torment by keeping you under their, not under Satan's torment, but under the torment of, of, uh, of, these, uh, of this, these angels by keeping you in the lies or by getting you to believe in the lies. This is being allowed because our Creator is insisting that you choose Him and His truth. It has to be a choice and Satan represents the opposite or everything that is false. Will the saints be on the, the scene during this time as well? The saints I was referring to back there, the 144,000 who will be resurrected that have already died? I do not know, but if they are, I suggest that you listen to them. If they are not, I suggest that you turn to the truth that was given through his son and his other prophets and receive his seal of protection. Those who have the mark of the beast will be tormented, so you might want to know what this what his mark is. It is your disobedience to your Creator that has led to your rebellion against Him. Yahweh's mark is given to those who cry and sigh for all of the abomination that is done in their midst. And the abomination is the rebellion that men has had to, to the truth that would have delivered them. Repent because the angel has the key to the cistern in his hand and he is waiting for the go-ahead to open the door and to the legion or to the legions that will be let loose to cause the torment. And I said before, referring to people thinking the saints are, will be the aliens, I believe the stage that Satan has set up that people are going to actually think that these, that these angels are aliens. But you look at the description of them in the text of, of um, chapter 9 and it certainly with their, their marvelous identifying marks it would be easy for people to believe and that's certainly what Satan has set up. As I said, Wormwood is on her way but this should be the least of any of your worries. If I were you I would be worried about the first woe because my father's angel has the key in his hand and the torment will follow.